going to be using the trap bar. Now, the good thing about this, this particular bar is it's heavy on its own. So the amount of weight that you've got to put on is quite light. So it's not really very good for your ego, but it's great to get the technique and the form right. Because of the position you're in, you're almost forced to do this exercise right. So personally, I really, really like this one. I like it to get my form right. When I'm really trying to get that mind to muscle connection, this would be the bar that I use for deadlifts. I know it's not what people want to hear because some people like to be in the, to the squat rack and, or the, the, the rack and pull big weights. I really like this bar, so I'm going to show you this now. So this is the trap bar deadlift. If you note the position that I start in, I'm sat in the position that I'm going to start the deadlift from. What I'm not going to do is what a lot of people do in the mistake that they make is to go like that and then to pick that bar up. This would put me in a really bad position which could potentially injure my back. So to get this down, we're going to start like we do with a house. Foundations are correct. Feet are shoulder width apart. My glutes are dropped down. My head's up to the sky. First thing I'm going to do, push through my legs and up chest to the sky, bend my back back over again. As the bar gets below my knees, I'm going to take my legs down and repeat that process. And every rep, the form that I take is by pushing the initial through my legs before my back comes into play. And I'm going to push my chest to the sky just to get that correct posture. And if you can see from the side, the position that this puts me in is perfect. Everyone, it's called a deadlift for a reason. It's not, it's got no momentum to it. It's a dead start and a dead finish every time. Okay guys, so this is how to perform a high rope row to the head. I'm using a, a rope attachment and it's set to a height that was just about in line with my chin. Now we're going to take the, the grip overhand like so. I'm going to take the stretch off, I'm going to place one foot forward, fully stretch, and that is the position that I'm going to start in when I'm leaning forward. As I'm pulling it back, I'm pulling it up to my eyebrows, and just note my elbow position on this as well. I'm pulling it back, and I'm pulling my elbows forward, almost as if I'm doing a front bicep pose. And every time I'm stretching forward and I'm pulling back. As I'm pulling my hands back, I'm driving my elbows forward to really engage the muscles on my back. One more. Ooh. And that's a great way to do it. We're using a DAP machine. You can use a high cable, but just try and get the height set right so it's about in line within the side of your chin using the rope handle. Okay guys, so this is a variation of a lap pull down, but we're not using a conventional lap pull down bar, we're using a cutler bar. Your hand grip is in a different position. So as we take this down to Ashley, what she's gonna do at the top, she's always gonna emphasize the stretch on them lats. Now, what a lot of people do mistakenly in this is they lean dead far back, so they almost come like that. That's not how we perform this exercise. So you're just going to keep your head looking to the sky and as she's going to bring that down to the top of her chest, holding that squeeze. And as she goes up, she fully stretches them lats off at the top. Can you see what she's doing? Then she's only coming back by a couple of inches just to allow that to pass her nose. Fully stretching and come back down. And you'll actually be able to see in the position that you're in now just how this contracts the back muscles. She's getting it down. She's holding that squeeze back up again, fully stretching them lats. And this is one of the great exercises to target the lats on a, on a back day workout. Okay, so this is another variation of a lat pull down. So it's a close grip. Now again, we're gonna use the cutler attachment, but you can use any V bar. So we're gonna notice Lindsay's hand position on this. 
Okay, so her starting position is fully extended, arms locked, and then can you see how she's really stretching them lats off? Now again, what she's not gonna do is she's not gonna come right back and then pull that down. That's not what's gonna happen. What she's gonna do is take it right to the top. She's just gonna bring herself back enough so this rope can pass her nose. She's gonna bring it to the top of her chest. And then as she returns it back to the top, she stretches them lats off again and she's bringing it down again and she's pushing her chest to the sky. And her breathing's important as well. So her breathing's coming out at this point. She's breathing in as she goes up and fully stretching and breathing out as she comes down and holds. Two mullins. So again, if you take a side position on this, just watch the position that Lindsay's in. She's not leaning back. She's not swinging. She's not getting any momentum into there. This is complete isolation. Do one more there, Linz. Okay, hold on. My bad. Okay, guys. So this is a wide grip on the ISO row machine. So first thing we've done is set the height that is correct for Linz. Now she's going to grab the bars at the very top. Now what she's always going to do in this exercise is as she brings her hands to, towards her chest, she's making sure that she pushes her chest towards her hands as well. So she's throwing it in. Then she's going to stretch all the way forward. Then she's going to push herself towards there as them hands are coming back every single time. So what we're imagining is there's a little bit of string on her elbows and I'm pulling that string. As I'm pulling that string, she's pushing her chest almost towards it and up to the sky which really forces the emphasis on the lats. Notice the breathing on this as well. She's breathing out at that point. As she goes forward, she breathes in. And as she comes back, she's breathing. So this is all going in a motion now. Two more. One more. Final one. Push in, stretch, and take a full stretch all the way at the top. Hold that stretch and then relax. Okay guys, this is straight bar, wide grip, standing preacher curl. There's a couple of key elements that I wanna show you on this. The first thing is grabbing the bar about an inch wider than the shoulder width apart. As we come down, we're locking ourselves in. Now, if we notice my foot position on this where I've got my feet, I've got them spread wide and dug into the ground so I can get right right into this. As I grab this bar, as I say, that's shoulder width apart. I'm gonna go about an inch wider. As I bring this bar up, notice how my elbows are flared out, but the tricep is flat against the pad. As I come down, my wrists are cocked back over ever so slightly, and I'm dragging that bar up, and at the top, I'm imagining I'm squeezing the pinky side of my palm to get the maximum squeeze every time. Remember, the negative part of this exercise is vastly important. So a nice controlled four second negative, using a two second positive, and then a second hold to squeeze every single rep. The squeeze is massively important too. Make sure you hold that squeeze. It's important to get the blood to this bicep. So again, the pinky side of our palm, as we're bringing that up, we're imagining we're pulling it with that part there to try and get the maximum contraction onto the bicep. Okay, so this is how to perform an alternating dumbbell curl. What we've done is we've took a normal bench put on a 45 degree incline and she's just resting her glutes against it. She's gonna do one arm at a time and as she's gonna bring it up to contraction, she's gonna twist her pinky finger in, which is gonna really overemphasize the squeeze on her bicep. So note her wrist position on this. They're still slightly dropped back and she's really twisting that pinky side in which is getting maximum contraction on that bicep. So can you see the position of the dumbbell changing as she takes it to the top and the bottom portion of the exercise? So she's twisting it now to be in line with the legs and then she's twisting that pinky round. If you notice at the bottom, she's also tensing her tricep. 
as she's alternating the opposite arm. When we're doing this, it's important that we can get a contraction in the bicep and not just throw weights around. That's why we've chosen a weight, which actually we'll be able to get around about 10 to 12 reps on each arm, but feel a contraction on every single rep. Okay, so we're gonna do barbell 21s. So 21s, it's three sets of seven, and it's gonna be taking the bar from the low point to that point seven times, and then from that point, to that point seven times, and then finally from that point to that point seven times. So I'm gonna show you that now. So first thing is the position of our hands. Now on most bars, there's little ridges like that there, which you tend to put your middle finger on them bars and that puts you just shoulder width apart. At that point then, we're gonna take the bar and we're gonna just slightly unlock our arms. And from this point, I want you to know my hand position as well. Generally, when we do a bicep curl, we tend to bring our wrists up like that. I don't wanna do that. I wanna slightly drop my wrists back over and I'll explain why in just a second. So from this point here, it's from there. And it's from that point to that point seven times. Now, just a couple of things to see what I'm doing here. I'm not hunching forward. I'm keeping my chest to the sky. I'm taking it from that point. My wrists are cocked back ever so slightly and I'm holding that squeeze and I'm really squeezing that bar. Now, I'm not dropping my wrists like that. I'm just taking them just off center. So from that, seven times. Once I get there, I'll hold it at the seventh rep from there, and I'll come up. Now, again, I'm not pulling it to there because that'll lose the tension and just put it on my front delts. So it's gonna be from there to there, from there to there, and hold that squeeze. And once I've done that seven times, I'll take it back to the bottom again, and then, when we're doing this, imagine there's a tennis ball in that portion of our arm. So when we're bringing it up, we're just popping that tennis ball every single time. If we pull it to there, we haven't got any contraction on our bicep. So the final part of this exercise now is from that point, up and squeeze and return that down. So just to go through that finally one more time, this point, one, two, three and on the seventh rep we'll hold it there we'll go one two three and on the seventh rep we'll hold it back down again it's one two three and on the seventh rep that'll complete the full set of 21s and you'll really feel your arms pumped on that exercise okay so this is how you can do a spider curl on an incline bench we're going to be using the dumbbells so i've got the bench on a 45 degree angle as you can see there now first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to lay my chest down against the bench and i'm going to just let my traps fall let my shoulders fall into this and at this point i'm going to start with the dumbbells in this position and i'm going to bring them up and as i bring them up i'm twisting my pinkies can you see and i'm coming down my elbows going back and at this point i'm holding that contraction every time, controlling every single rep. So there's no swinging, there's no loss of contraction at all times. And I'm really emphasizing, twisting them wrists in over. So I'm forcing that up with the palm side of my pinky. Ooh. And that's how to perform a spider curl with the dumbbells on an incline bench. Okay guys, next up is another exercise on the Roman chair. This time we're gonna keep our legs straight. Same teaching points, we're gonna make sure that we keep our toes pointing to the ceiling so our shins are gonna be flexed. We're gonna breathe out when our legs are at the top, when our muscles are under contraction. We're gonna breathe in as we go down. So again, we're gonna bring Ashley's shoulders off the pad slightly, which will throw the emphasis on the lower abs, which is the muscle that we're trying to target here by doing a leg raise. So as she goes into this exercise now, if you know her legs are straight, her shins are flexed, and she's gonna bring that up there, and she's breathing the air out, and she's going down, and she's bringing it back up again. That's it, keep going. This is a really difficult exercise to do. Just do three more for me, Ash. The breathing's really important on this. Do me one more. 
hold it and breathe out, rest for a second. The lower abs is a, an area which many people struggle with and it's a really difficult area to try and train. And as you're doing a normal crunch, the bottom two abs generally get neglected. So some form of leg raise is essential to try and get a complete six or eight pack, whatever your, your body definition is. You can do this on a bench, doing a line leg raise, but if you do have a Roman chair, it's a fantastic way to target the lower abs. Okay guys, next up is the abdominal crunch machine. Now, there's variations of this machine and each machine will slightly sit you differently. But for this way, we're gonna tuck our legs behind the pad at the bottom. And the key element of this is it's our elbows that we're gonna drive as we come down. We're gonna hold the squeeze for a split second at the bottom. So as Ashley goes now, she'll keep her head back and she'll drive them elbows down. She'll breathe out at that point and she'll get the air in as she goes up. Now, what she'll never do is let them plates touch. So she'll come down and she'll never ever let them plates touch, which keeps the contraction and the tension on the abdominals at all times. The breathing's really important in this exercise. Make sure that as you contract them abdominals at the bottom, the air is coming out. And hold that squeeze just for a slight second at the bottom then stretch and return. Do three more for me, Ash. Really breathe and squeeze them in. One more. Great work. So just to recap on that, as we're going down, we imagine that we're driving our elbows down by our sides, which is gonna throw the tension into them abdominals. So we'll just do two more, two more reps now just to see. So she's throwing them abdominals. That's it. Go on. She's throwing the tension where, where we need it to be in them abdominals. Go on, do two more. Breathe that air out and in. One more and rest.